Just take a, take a nice inhalation and allow yourself to be very present to this moment. Allow yourself to be here and now. Let go of where you're going to go after service. Let go of where you have come from to be here. And just allow yourself to be keenly aware that there's an evolutionary impulse that governs all creation. Another name for that evolutionary impulse is the presence of God within each and every one of us. And some way, shape, form, or another, you said yes to being here at this precise moment in a spiritual community that is seeking for people to know that they're not separate from the divine, that the divine is not a future state that happens when you die, except dying to your littleness and your little perception. You're entering into a spiritual community that understands totally and completely that all of the power and presence and love that there is called by countless names is right here where we are in this moment. In this month, we're working with this particular theme of moving from anticipation to full uh, participation. We've come to an understanding that we're at the apex of another, another kind of evolution on the planet, and we're ending one form of evolution. The one form of evolution that we're ending is the evolution in which we change by adapting to circumstances and situations, and we're now entering into the evolutionary state in which we are participating in our own evolution regardless of circumstances and situations, that we have a say-so in the unlocking of our destiny. We have a say-so in our own unfolding. This is a participatory universe. Whereas before, individuals, you know, just kind of adapted to circumstances in order to survive, we're not, we're beyond that stage now. We, this is called the stage of agency. That is the age we're living in. We're living in the age of agency in which uh, uh, DNA and hereditary determinism is pretty much over now. That used to be a thing. You know, your DNA and your heredity determines your destiny. We know now through epigenetics, of which the mystics have been speaking about for thousands of years, that you get to determine your destiny. You get to allow your DNA and your hereditary patterns to be a starting point of your leaping into a great expression of life. But it takes your participation. It takes your expanded awareness so that the DNA hereditary determinism, which still captures the hearts and minds and subjective tendencies of many people, even some of our best doctors are still caught up in that kind of a hypnotic spell. But those who have are practitioners of metaphysics beyond the physical realm, those who are leaning into mysticism, an awareness of one's oneness with the presence of God that's untouched, untarnished by time, space, opinions, points of view, positionalities, and even human experience, individuals who are leaning into that dynamic are becoming more free to grow and participate in their own unfolding. This is the age of agency. You get to determine your own freedom. No longer is it your parents' fault, your D, the DNA's fault, your heredity. It's what somebody said, what somebody did, whatever's going on in the world. Those days are over. You're now standing on the precipice of real freedom. Dynamic liberation, if you choose it. So we are moving from uh, uh, mere anticipation of good into full participation in good. And that is, you are cultivating an inner feeling tone through spiritual practice, an inner feeling tone through meditation, through affirmative prayer, uh, through life visioning, through high and holy fellowship, through study, through retreat, through introspection that leads to transpection. You are moving into an, into an awareness that... The feeling tone of here, now, my need is met. Feeling tone that all is well now. Even though circumstances may not square with that. Feeling tone, life is for me. Feeling tone, everything is working together for my good. I'm emphasizing feeling tone and the participation in that feeling tone so that your inner work is about being captured by that until through spiritual work you're able to stabilize and normalize that feeling and catch yourself when, in fact, you fall prey to the world of circumstance, situations, conditions, people, places, and things with 
other people are thinking about you, what you think other people are thinking about you, what you think other people are thinking about, what you're thinking, you will begin to dissolve those particular patterns so that you're living in eternity now. I am not saying that this is easy because we've all been imprinted by time and space, imprinted by opinion, imprinted by points of view, imprinted by societal milieu. We've been imprinted by superstitious thoughts, imprinted by religiosity that keeps us separate from God or paints God as a man in the sky. We've all been imprinted by that which is not true. And we can experience that which is not true. But just because we experience that which is not true does not make it real, meaning eternal. It's just an experience of a lie. And as I've said over the years, uh, you know, a lie believed until it's neutralized acts as truth. Acts as, re acts as our law until it's neutralized. So we're in the age of agency in which we are stepping into a feeling tone that our need is met right now. We're feeling that. You see, and so your work is, is not to use all of your energy to shoot into the future, to project into the future. You become aware that whatever is happening presently in your awareness does become your future experience. So right here and right now, you are saying in substance, not just saying it, you're saying in substance and feeling it and, and having a level of coherence around, I'm a full participant in joy right now. I'm a full participant in love. I'm a full participant in the beauty. And then allow for the great law of life to show up as the visible expression of that feeling tone. And you will not know how that's going to happen. You, know, you won't know who it's going to happen through. You can plan. Planning is a good thing. Uh, you can visualize. Visualizing is a good thing. But ultimately, both of those particular points of view cannot touch the infinite ways by which the presence of God, which is everywhere, can reveal itself in your life. And when you are able to stabilize that for a period of time, all manner of circumstances that are coagulating thought forms, opinions, and points of view will shift and become a different vibrational condition for the birth of the recognition and realization and one minute of the spirit of the demonstration of the good that's trying to happen in your life. And so we're not merely anticipating good, as I said in the reading uh, uh, on the theme of the month, that that's a good start. To anticipate good is a good start. It is better than the opposite, anticipating bad and foreboding and negative things are about to happen. It's a great start. But we are vibrationally segueing through prayer and through meditation into an awareness that all here now. It's all here now. Those three words, all here now. All of the presence is here. All of the presence is now. All of the presence of love, abundance, not materialism, abundance, all needs met here now. And so since we're stepping out of DNA heredity determinism into the age of agency, we're saying what I am feeling is the vibrational word of God. And so we ask ourselves this morning, what are we speaking into existence? You may want to at times, you, many of you have iPhones or things of that particular nature. Just, you know, put your phone on a record for a while and listen from time to time to your conversation. And then you will see what you're speaking into existence. You will understand, as the reading indicated, the power of the words that flow out of your mouth. What blessing or curse flows out of your mouth. You will see what you are speaking into existence, particularly when you're angry, particularly when you're fearful, particularly when emotions are running high. What are you speaking into existence, you see? And so it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, 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 an awareness exercise. What am I speaking into existence right now? So that you begin to be aware that, yes, you may start off your day wonderful, which is good. And then 
that becomes like your morning time. And then all of the rest of the afternoon into evening, be aware of what's coming out of your mouth. What are you speaking into existence? What, what vibrational frequency are you releasing into the world that is coagulating as your worldview and the world in which you are living now? That's one. Two is, what are you thinking? Even if it's not spoken, but you're thinking it, you could possibly pollu be polluting the environment. If you walk into a room and you have a judgment about somebody, and you may not say it because it's impolite. Ooh, I don't like those shoes. Ooh, her hair is ridiculous. What, what kind of tie has he got on? What is he talking about? Anyway, you may not say a word because you want to keep polite company, but your judgmental thought forms are still invading the atmosphere. What are you thinking into existence? What are those thought forms? And so you want to just be aware without harshly judging yourself, without beating yourself out, up. You want to say in substance, uh, let me see reality. Let me see the real. Let me see the, the real evolutionary impulse that's behind what I'm witnessing in the visible. Then you'll discover and feel into one of my favorite phrases is that behind every human aberration, there lies a spiritual aspiration that we'll see with our judgmentalism the aberrations of human beings. Humans are crazy. <laughs> I, I, I have to admit it. We're a bit nuts, you know. <laughs> I mean, a cosmic being that has mm, access to the entirety of love and beauty and joy and harmony, the entirety of it, Play small with lack, limitation, scarcity, fear, doubt, worry, judgment, selfishness, greed, you see. And, and so, and then they're all tributaries of that sense of separation that makes the lot of humanity an interesting thing to witness. But if we could ask ourselves or, or say in substance, let me see that which is real, then... Even when we walk into a room and we see an aberration, we might be privy to the impulse of God. The aspiration is kind of trying to come through, but it's coming through a personality that has not yet been healed of trauma and drama and a sense of separation. We will then invite ourselves. I said at the beginning of the service, I want everyone to be a practitioner, not necessarily a licensed practitioner, but one who practices. We can begin to say in substance, uh, let me, not only let me see that which is real, but let the thoughts of my mind be a healing, be a blessing everywhere that I go. This is to walk not with high religiosity, with piety and thinking that we are better than anyone. It is just to walk with a level of grace a level of practice so that we are fully participating in the great law of life, which is for us. We're participating with the love, the beauty, and the joy, not denying it, saying in substance through our judgment, God is everywhere except there. You see, we begin to be aware that the presence of God is everywhere, even in what the mind may call a, a ugliness. There is a presence there and a, and, and a life there that needs a level of redemption, a level of transmutation based on observation, based on prayer, based on consciousness of blessing. And then we are now stepping into an awareness of what am, I, what am I speaking into existence? You may say it another way. What am I complaining into existence? What am I fearing into existence? You see? And all of this is an awareness exercise so we can keep coming back to ourselves and becoming aware uh, that the tongue holds a blessing and a curse. Our thoughts hold a blessing or a curse. That which is denying life, that's what a curse is, it's denying life. And we begin to little by little eradicate judgment and we begin to move into a level of discernment with healing blessings flowing through us. And then we become a candidate 
a continual candidate for more good than we can imagine. In the earlier uh, meditation service, uh, I, I talked about it being called human interruptus. And, and that is all the ways that we've been imprinted uh, uh, by forces in the world and all the ways that we've been imprinted by experiences of drama and trauma in, in our particular uh, living, uh, living-ness uh, has forged a pattern of thought and behavior that just cycles itself over and over and over again. But when we become still, stand still and see the salvation. Stand still and see and become a part of self-elevation. Then that human uh, experience of, uh, I'm talking about the part where we sense a separation, uh, begins to be interrupted. It begins to be uh, deconstructed. Uh, something begins to change in our life. And as I spoke last week, then all the places within us that are trying to save uh, that little identity, you know, begin to lose power and we begin to break free. Remember what Jesus the Christ said. He said in substance, if you try to save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, if you lose your life for the sake of the Christ, if you lose your life for the sake of excellence, you'll have life eternal. So the ego is trying to save his little life. And we're talking about losing that so that the life eternal can flow through us. And then you'll discover something else. And this, of course, I mentioned this in the way of meditation service that in the, in the Western world, not necessarily in indigenous cultures where healing is a little different. They're not like running from things. They're just trying to stop things. In indigenous culture, there's an embracing of everything so that there can be an acknowledgement and a transmutation into a higher frequency. But in the Western world, individuals are afraid of being afraid. It's called a fear phobia. They're afraid of pain. And so what happens is they'll use exogenous sources in order to stop the pain, not get to the source of it, just to stop it, you see. So that's why the pharmaceutical company, you know, kind of runs the show because people don't want to feel their fear, feel their fear, and they don't want to feel pain. And, and so they'll use exogenous sources to just block all of that, which is also blocking transformation. Because oftentimes you just have to just be with whatever's coming up. And I'm not saying there isn't a time that you may need to take something. I'm not saying that, so don't write me any letters about that. I'm just talking about as a matter of course, sometimes we could take that a little bit too far. And so, in the indigenous cultures, you're, you're with it. You're with the fear. You're not putting it on someone else. You're with and again, there's exception to this rule. If somebody's pointing a gun at you, be very afraid. You're, you're, you're with whatever's coming up. But in your, your state of observation and prayer, there is an embracing. You're not, you're not running from pain. You're not running to pleasure. You're actually opening yourself up for freedom, which brings bliss and pleasure, both. So you're not just running from fear and, and pain and running to pleasure because that becomes empty calories. You, you're, you're doing your inner work so that you become free from the entanglement of superstitious thoughts and beliefs and perceptions and small identities that we've identified ourselves with. And then there are bliss hits Joy hits, where we become aware of joy and it's not attached to anything. We become aware of peace, but it doesn't mean there isn't conflict going on. We become aware of a level of mm, conviction. It's here, it's now. And one circumstance may not have even changed yet. And so we're talking about not merely anticipating good, which is a good start, 
We're talking about feeling, feeling tone. Feeling and emotions aren't the same thing. The emotions are the condensation of previous health thought forms that have become energized within us. They become emotions. They give you a, 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 a clue to what you really believe inside, you see. But a feeling tone is your connection to the presence, you see. And so it's not a denial of stuff. It's a feeling tone that we stabilize. It's happening now. So we're moving from mm, uh, 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 just anticipating good, which is a good start, to participating in the good and becoming full participants in our own evolution and this age of agency in which uh, 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 hereditary determinism is now dying on the vine right in front of us. Now, of course, those of you veterans who've been involved in meta physical teachings for years, you already know this. You, you've just been waiting for the science to catch up. You celebrated when epigenetics became a thing. You celebrated when, when quantum physics and the explanation of a holographic universe and that each of us being a holographic expression, uh, even in a small part, we carry the whole cosmos within us. You celebrated that there was finally scientific language uh, that mimicked and described what the mystics and sages have been saying for years. You've celebrated. So now the marriage, uh, the, the divorce between science and spirituality that took place in the Middle Ages, not in indigenous cultures, um, the mystical marriage has happened again, where we have the quantum reality and the quantum physicist and the mystics basically creating a divine marriage and saying, all is one. One life, one God, one power, one presence, one consciousness, one mind, one life, everywhere in its fullness. And we're at the age, as I keep telling you, that, that we get to participate. We're not waiting for an external deity to say, you get to evolve. I mean, they used to think, I mean, there are still people who think this, but not too many in the scientific realm. People used to think that a human being evolved from an ape. When an ape evolves, it's a better ape. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you, as a spiritual being, have a human incarnation. There's total unfoldment that's taking place among a being that can perfectly reflect the cosmos in a way that has never happened before. As I said at the beginning of this service, the universe is up to this. People want to know what the universe is up to? The universe is up to producing an individual that can perfectly reflect the entire cosmos. That's why you love Jesus. That's why you love Gautama the Buddha. That's why you love Krishna and other avatars that have walked the planet because in their own individual way, in their own space, their own time, their own culture, they reflected the infinite, timeless nature of reality, left a vibrational blueprint in the newest sphere of the planet so that thousands of years later that vibrational frequency is still there of which shines as a vibrational example as they were exemplars an example Quan Yin an example Woo. of the possibility that lies within each and every one of us this is the age of agency the age of agency. No excuses. The age of agency. You get to unlock your own destiny. The age of agency. You get to uh, use and, and, and ultimately become used by the sacred laws so that healing and mending, so that harmonizing prosperity, that joy, that wellness and well-being, that creativity and generosity can emerge. So this is the age of agency. Wherever you are on the planet, just say this out loud. This is the age of agency. This is the age of agency. This is the age of agency. I want you to remember that, you see, because we can easily get hypnotized right back into, I'll be sure glad when humanity evolves. <laughs> we have to take responsibility for our own evolution. Technology has outstripped humanity's Mm, heart at times. That's why we're still building bombs. 
We're still having wars as if that's a normal thing. They have commercials on television. Be all you can be. Learn how to kill somebody. You see, we've normalized all of that under the guise of we've got to protect. We've got to normalize oneness, love, and we're all one. That's because to normalize that, you see. Got to normalize that. And this is the interesting thing about that. When you're vibing at one with the power and the presence and the love of God, there is an inbuilt security system that allows you, when you're vibrating at that level, to be safe in a world that's fitful with a sense of separation. You're not living in that world. You're living in a higher frequency. I'm not saying any of this is easy. You're bombarded every single day by social media, television, news, all kinds of stuff, and, 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 and talk about fake news. <laughs> but there is something called the good news, the gospel. It's a different spell. It's not the spell that's going to bring you into disease and discomfort. It's a God spell that wakes you up from the spell of separation. Mm, mm, mm. Life is good, I'm telling you. I think I've said that for so many years that I believe it. <laughs> I do. I do believe it. I do. I've said it for so I remember, remember Coco? I remember years ago when I started saying it, even Coco was a little upset with me. What, what do you mean life is good? Did you read the newspaper today? I may or may not have. But I wasn't speaking about the experience of life. Everyone has their own experience of life. I'm thinking about life at its core. Cannot compromise, sabotage, or work against itself. And we are an emanation of that life. And as we become conscious of that and participate in our own unfoldment, we can say life is good. Oh, my God, even when it is dark outside, even when we can't see the way, we can shout triumphantly. Life is magnificent. Prove it to me. Let me be the proof, the exclamation point that life is magnificent. Let it heal the brokenhearted. Let it heal the wounds. Let it transmute the woundedness. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let it. Let it, let it, let it. Let us segue from anticipating good to feeling the good. Well, take a, take a deep inhalation right here. Release. Now, oh, that was good. Oxygen. Oxygen is a gas. <laughs> and you know what? When you took that breath, <laughs> you didn't think for one second there wasn't going to be enough air. You just said, whew, mm, that's good. That's good stuff. Well, in L.A., we like to see our air, but anyway. <laughs> we, don't have total, we don't have total faith yet, but we're getting there, you know. But if you, 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 you become aware of your blessings, this is basic metaphysics and you begin to feel oh this this second right here my need is met now what I need to do is extend it until my next second I need to extend it to my next second when I'm out of I'm not in this particular con circumstance condition sanctuary I need to extend it your spiritual practice until that extension and expansion of my consciousness becomes my new norm. And then behold, all things are made new. Oh my God, I've never noticed how beautiful, how much beauty is here. I, did, I never noticed how much love is here, how I'm supported. The universe is supporting me through people that love and I never know oh my god behold I make all things new 
Ask yourself, what am I speaking? What am I thinking into existence? Not as a judgment against yourself, just as an awareness exercise. And as you become aware of what you're speaking and thinking into existence without judging yourself, you just up-level your inner conversation. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this, but I know I am. <laughs> Maybe you'll start there. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get through this, Woo! but I know I am. I am. I am. I am. I am free now. Let me see the miracle. I'm available. I'm open now. I'm feeling it right now. Oh, remember in prayer. Prayer does not bring you the answer. Prayer, the vibration of prayer is the answer. It's the vibration of the answer that then becomes visible. You'll learn about this beginning Tuesday night. Six powerful teachers bringing you into the different nuance of the soul of prayer. Don't, I, I, I was going to say, d don't miss it. And let me just say this. Remember to sign up. Remember to participate regardless of what time zone you're in because it's all recorded and when you wake up, it'll be there for you. Just turn within at this moment. And let's have a moment of a full participation. Oh, great God of the universe called by millions of names. We're lifting ourselves into a high altitude and attitude of gratitude. Oh, how thankful we are. We enter into the gates with praise and thanksgiving. We enter into expanded consciousness with praise and thanksgiving. We praise and we pray and we give thanks. We give thanks for the breath that we are taking right now. We give thanks for the beating of our heart. We give thanks that wherever we are in life right now, it's a new beginning. It's not an ending. It's a new beginning. We're beginning anew. This is... This is a new beginning right now. We're not carrying the cadavers of the past into this moment. This is a new beginning. 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 We're participating in a new beginning right now. Oh, behold, all things are made new right now. We're grateful. That's how we begin. That's how we begin. And then from gratitude, oh my God, there's a pure recognition of life. Oozing through the semen as a plant. A cut healing without us doing anything but keeping it cleansed. We keep our mind cleansed, our emotional body cleansed, and healing happens. A healing is a revelation of the intrinsic order that's already there. And then a great oneing occurs in consciousness. We feel one with God. This is not a future God. This is not a God of the past where miracles have happened 2,000 years ago. Yes, they did happen. But this is the God of now. Miracles can happen now. They're not relegated to the past. That's used for inspiration and encouragement. Yes. But right here and right now, we're feeling our oneness with the presence. We're participating in our oneness with the presence of God, with every thought, with every breath, with every beating of our heart in gratitude. And the word, the vibrational frequency of almightiness is being spoken into existence right now. Let there be light. That's intelligence. Let there be love, the total givingness of the Spirit. Let there be abundance. God is everywhere. It's all needs met. Let there be beauty. Divine order. Divine harmony. Let it be. I speak the word for each and every one of us. 
knowing there's only one of us behind the myriad expression of good, infinite expressions of good, plants and animals and soil and rivers and lakes and mountains and trees and grass and humans and oh, one life back of it all. We see through the dim midst of eternity and we see as we are seen infinite potential. Except Accept wholeness right now. Just accept it. Accept a sense of well-being right now. Accept a deep sense of peace of mind right now. Accept it. The word is spoken. Now. Now. Woo! Right now. Oh, Jackie, so when I see you, give him a little feeling. Mm. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. begin with me right now the mind wants to shoot out and say let it begin with them we're saying let it begin with me right now with this breath that we take we're letting peace be the activity of our awareness love the activity of our awareness joy the activity of our awareness abundance the activity of our awareness life loving itself as us, as the activity of our awareness. And in this consciousness, we enter into this prayerful tryst with the presence of God as our very life and being. 